If I asked you to go somewhere in the world that you've never been to before, how would you find your way? I know what I'd use. Phone, Google Maps, sorted. What are you doing? All right, good job. I've got my car sat nav. Oh, look, looks like I'm not allowed that. Um, okay, let's ditch the technology. Got my good old Explorer map. Oh, okay. Um, ah, homemade compass. <laughs> not having that. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, okay, okay. Um, okay uh, Dad, will you help me? No! Oh. Oh, all right then. Um, this is a bit difficult. What would you use? Some animals face this challenge of travelling from one country to the other every year. But it's not even a challenge for them because they've got it sussed out. Millions of animals take seasonal journeys across the globe, some of them travelling thousands of miles, going from one habitat to the other and then back to the original one. And this wonderful marvel is called migration. Migration is observed across the animal kingdom, from teeny tiny insects to gargantuan giants. I love the word gargantuan. It means really, really, really big. And migration occurs on land, in the sea, or in the air. And they do this because at any one time throughout the year, there are different seasons across the world and some seasons are much more preferable for some species than other seasons. So I guess if I could always live in the great British springtime like what we have here, I so would. Now, many species actually use migration in order to survive because they might always need to be surrounded by a particular food source or maybe they always need a comfy place to rest at night or maybe there are calmer waters for them to protect their young. So migration is really a big survival tactic. Let me give you some examples. Humpback whales, one of the largest animals in our world. They can be as tall as eight adult men standing on top of one another. Whoa! So cool, so big. So in the summertime, they feed at the nutrient rich poles. And then as these seas become colder in the winter, they migrate to around the equator to the warmer waters where they can bring up their young in nice warm environment. Then there's the Arctic Tern. And these birds are absolute sun worshippers. They follow the summer season all the time. They go from the Arctic summer in the top all the way down to the Antarctic summer at the bottom. And because of this, they experience the most amount of daylight than any other animal. And they travel a whopping 35,000 kilometers in a round trip, which gives them the award of the longest migration on this planet. Okay, just one more example. The Christmas Island Red Crab. I quite like Christmas. Every year, millions of these large red crabs travel down from their forest homes in their masses and head towards the ocean. And when they're at the ocean, they make some mates, have some babies, and about two weeks later, they migrate back to their forests. And this round trip takes only about eight kilometers, which is a lot less than the whale and the tern, but it's still cool regardless. But my big question is, how on earth, yeah, literally on earth, do these animals navigate these vast distances? How do they know when to migrate, how to migrate, or just, where's their sat-nav? Now, migratory animals have some really clever adaptations to travel our massive world. And in this episode, I'm going to tell you about just one of them. This video is all about the aptly named globe skimmer. And I'll give you a clue about what this is. So I'm going to make it out of sweets. So they're about four centimetres in length. And I'm going to do a bit of an over representation because I've tried fiddling around making it a little bit smaller, but it's not working. And it's got two sets of wings. 
Oh, she's dribbling all over me. <laughs> Here's its marshmallow head. It's actually mostly made up of its eyes because it's got massive eyes, which means it can see in almost all directions apart from right behind it. Can you guess what it is? It's a type of dragonfly. Dragonflies are believed to hold the longest insect migration in the world, traveling up to 18,000 kilometers, which is just as much as the blue whale. Can you believe it? A blue whale's tongue alone weighs as much as an African elephant. Yet these tiny dragonflies weigh as little as a couple of pieces of pasta, and yet they travel the same distance. Amazing. They absolutely smash the record of the previous record holder, the monarch butterfly, which I did try to assemble with space, what are they called, flying space hoppers or whatever, but it didn't really work. But anyway, they've smashed the record of the monarch butterfly and they, you're not getting this either. And they, <laughs> you are so greedy. Oh no, <laughs> dropped a wing. Um, well, no, anyway, the monarch butterfly, they travel 7,000 kilometers, which is still pretty big for something so small and because they do the round trip from Canada to Mexico, but still, it's not as big as these mighty movers. So the globe skimmer dragonfly starts in India, clustering in its thousands to cross the Indian Ocean flyway. Love that. Not a highway, but a flyway. So cool. They might take a nice break in the Maldives or the Seychelles. Ooh, rather nice. It can take as little as four days to get to the East African coast and they can even spread further south. So shout out to my Kenyan family and friends. Keep a lookout for these guys on your travels, but the non-edible versions. You might be wondering, why go to all of this effort, apart from for a jolly nice holiday? Well, they're following the rains. They're exploiting the monsoon season in India and then the wet season in Africa, because with rain, comes food and there are thousands of tiny insects for the globe skimmer to munch on thousands of them so that would be like me with cake going from friend's house to friend's house to friend's house and then demolishing all the cake that i can get hold of i'm liking their style oh no it's my cake not your cake my cake no I like cake! You also like cake, but I like cake more! The dragonflies also follow the rains because they provide the perfect breeding place, which to you and me is known as a puddle. Yes, these dragonflies lay their eggs in puddles. But remember, this dragonfly is only about four centimetres long. Remember, this is a big version. And 18,000 kilometre journey is mahoosif. So they need a little bit of help to get over the vast open ocean. And so they go surfing. Not the waves, but the massive winds that the monsoon season brings. The monsoons basically create what I like to know of as a massive roller coaster in the sky. How wicked is that? And you don't even have to queue for it. Now these adrenaline junkies, super cool insects, avid travellers, whatever you want to call them. They are so well adapted for riding these gale force winds because they have some pretty neat adaptations. They've got two sets of wings, which means they've got a large surface area which the wind can push against and means that the dragonfly can glide along. Also, they actually don't have to flap their little wings that often. They only need to do it about 30 times a minute, which isn't that much because let's compare this to other insects. The mosquito needs to flap 600 times a minute and a common housefly needs to flap a thousand times a minute. So the dragonfly has got it sorted. The globe skimmer takes on this epic voyage once a year, but like the monarch butterfly, the previous record holder, it takes at least four generations of dragonflies for the whole migration to be complete. 
This is because once the dragonfly lays its eggs in the puddles, it then dies. And it's actually the children, the next generation, that take on the next leg of the journey and so on. So it's a big multi-generational sports day relay race, I guess. Hmm. And whilst this is all going on, they have to keep their big beady eyes on the lookout because larger bird species, species like the Amur falcon, they time their migration with the dragonfly's migration just to make sure they can have a nice tasty treat as they're flying along. So this isn't just the longest insect migration, it's also the only one which is known to cross the open ocean, which is pretty crazy, right? And scientists are still trying to learn a lot about it. In the future, they hope to develop a tracking device which is small enough to be fitted to a dragonfly. And if that does happen, it'll have to be just as small as 100,000, which is tiny. So there you go, one tiny creature traveling vast distances, lured by their tummy using immense forces of nature. Now, if migration has got you captivated, then subscribe to my YouTube channel as some of my upcoming videos will follow the many myriad of ways that marvellous animals migrate. <laughs> well, there's a tongue twister for you. The many myriad of ways that marvellous animals migrate. Hmm, I like it. Anyway, um, call me Bruce Bogtrotter, but I'm going to go on a mini migration to go and get that cake. Yeah!